Removable partial denture design regarding metal framework. In partial denture has a clear difference between complete prosthesis. The partial removal prosthesis comes with the metal framework to be able to restore partially dangerous condition as you see in this picture. So this patient lost some of the teeth and replace and restore with a metal framework partial denture called removable partial denture. So one of the clear difference between complete edentures, making complete denture versus partially edentures and making partial denture is partial denture does require metal framework for the structure integrity and rigidity. So this as is shown, this maxillary cast partially dentrous. And this is the metal framework design. And today we're gonna discuss about the five components that really needed to design the metal framework. After you acquire impression, whether digital intraoral scanning or physical PBS impression and pour up model both either way you will get the image of patient condition as is shown here this particular case is showing the direct intraoral scanning and as you notice patient is missing number 1415 and treatment plan for metal framework partial denture and we acquired impression through intraoral scanning and this is digitally designed metal framework and according to the design framework are printed and the model in this particular case also printed and to check make sure the framework printed or fabricated are fit well on the model and after you confirm this is metal framework trying in intra orderly the patient mouse so the framework will fit as you design on digitally when you're doing the metal framework fitting you make sure you check the receipt these receipts are fully seating and that's how you verify the fitting of metal framework that you fabricated. So we are going to discuss about how to design this metal framework. And to design the metal framework, there are five components that you need to follow. And so each case will be different as you notice. Depends on where the teeth are missing, which tooth are remaining, and what condition is the anterior posterior abutment present or remaining teeth or no all affect the design of your metal framework and this is after you fabricate metal framework and check the fitting intra orally so this is the picture when you're doing the fitting of the metal framework after you check the metal framework fitting then on top of this metal framework, we are going to set the teeth, artificial teeth, and finish the final processing and deliver final removal partial denture called the RPD. To, before you design the metal framework, you need to understand classification. And this classification, known as a Kennedy classification, have class 1 to 5. And Kennedy class 1 is bilateral distal extension. Kennedy class 2, unilateral distal extension. And these two are counting for about three-quarter of a case, entire edentrous case. 
and class 3 are about 14 percent that's when the patients are present anterior posteriorly and Kennedy class 4 is a similar as class 3 originally classified as a class 3 but it's cover and covering midline so when the missing edentrous space partially edentrous space including anterior midline is considered as a Kennedy class 4 that's about 8.5 percent and last and pretty small number is called Kennedy class 5 or Skinner class 5 it counts about 5 percent of the whole partially dangerous case Kennedy class 3 this is the example of Kennedy class 3 when you look at the condition there are posterities present on both sides and so the anterior posterities anterior abomantis and posterior abomantis so that still the posterities are present and so the most posterior edentrous area will determine the classification and this particular case has anterior posterior teeth remaining therefore Kennedy class 3 but there's a two additional missing space any additional missing area or spaces are count as modification so this particular case is Kennedy class 3 modification 2 because other than this space we have a two additional space present so it's modification 2 the detail about the Kennedy classification and modification please refer to the manual that you're going to read designing Kennedy class 3 are very different than designing Kennedy class 1 and 2 which we'll discuss quickly later Kennedy class 3 does have anterior posterior teeth remaining meaning the metal framework are supported by these remaining teeth front and posterior and when you look at this diagram because of presence of anterior and the posterior abutment the bite force applied onto the prosthesis transfer into these roots present in anterior and posteriorly therefore are fully supported by the teeth which is an anterior abutment and posterior abutment so that's a very unique compared to Kennedy class 1 or 2 so this is when you're designing Kennedy class 1 and 2 which is either bilateral distally missing or this particular case is showing you the unilateral distal extension meaning it only missing number 14 and 15 2 and 3 are present so we, there's no need to replace teeth on this side so it's a unilateral distal missing called unilateral distal extension called class 2 in this particular condition prosthesis are mainly supported by the tissue underneath it because there's no posterior teeth could support by force when the prosthesis are supported by the tissue the movement on this prosthesis under bite are much greater than Kennedy class 3 which we just reviewed the teeth are these are the vertical movement by millimeter versus when it's supported by the tissue the movement on the prosthesis vertically are mo way more greater than the teeth supported and study even showing this about 20 times more tissue movement meaning the prosthesis move compared to teeth bone partial denture because of these tissue movement and prosthesis affected when you take the impression you need to consider the functional impression it's called the altered cast on the mandibular arch when it comes to Kennedy class 1 and 2 mainly for the mandibular arch 
But besides the impression, one of the critical points when you're designing Meta Framework is when you're designing direct retainer or called clasp. When you're designing clasp, you must consider stress releasing clasp, which we're going to discuss next time. There are a number of different clasp designs that you could choose. But when it comes to kinetic class 1 or 2, which when you're designing the clasp on this particular tooth, now this tooth has a missing indentural space on the distally. When you're designing direct retainer on tooth number 12, you must choose one of stress releasing clasp design only not any other so we'll take a look at what are the option of stress releasing class so that's the main big difference when you're designing class one and two mainly it's supported by the tissue therefore a lot greater movement and this because of movement of prosthesis you need to be careful to choose a class assembly so this is the image that has when it has a last tooth because the reason we're using the class only for the stress releasing because this distal extension partial denture move up and down 20 times more than can it class 3 case or 4 which is teeth supported that means what during the function the abutment tooth which is holding prosthesis has a greater, much greater risk in terms of the force transfer. Therefore, you need to be choose, you need to choose very carefully about the direct retainer so that load will not adversely affect on the abutment tooth. When you're designing Skinner class 5, this is Originally, Kennedy class 2, because it's unilateral distal extension. But the Skinner named class 5 because when this missing space past the middle line, meaning entire arch on the one side are completely missing any remaining teeth. So it's only remaining on the one side when you look at the midline this one only remaining teeth present on the patient right side and because of for the stability of the prosthesis you always prefer to have on right and left at least one each side to make balance out the force during the function unfortunately this Skinner class 5 case, patient only have a teeth on one side. That means what? When the left side patient choose and wear and eat and function, these prostheses are much more movement compared to when you have any abutment tooth remaining. So Skinner class 5, this one, as a different classification as 1 to 4, he named as a class 5. And when you have a Skinner class 5 condition, you need to use the multiple rest for all the remaining teeth. So when you look at it, there's rest, rest, rest. And clasp, you use the lingual retention on the molar because of lingually tilt and when it comes for maxillary you use the full palatal connector because it's very few teeth remaining and we're going to discuss about the different major connector and then we'll discuss a little bit soon, later when you make the class 5 RPD partial denture you need to make an occlusion light on this area on the left side compared to the right side which will be in the normal occlusion on the left side when you 
fabricate the denture, partial denture prosthesis. Occlusion should be lighter on this area, which is on edentrous space. So these are the five different classifications. And make sure you start with the classifications so that you know how to differentiate between class one and two, which is tissue bone partial versus class three and four, which are teeth supported teeth bone partial denture. When it comes to the design, and if you take only three different conditions, the condition of present teeth, abnormal position of the teeth, and position of edentrous spaces. Let's say this is the only difference or criteria. It still comes out with so many different design of partial denture. So do we have to remember all of this based on the condition? No, actually you don't need to remember any of design done on a particular case because each case are very unique and to design the matter framework correctly, you only need to remember these five components. Again, these five components, guiding plane, major connector, direct retainer, indirect retainer, and minor connector are the sequence that you're going to design any partially dangerous condition. So in any case that you have to design the matter framework, you must follow this step by step, which is five step, five components. Then you'll be able to design any condition without any trouble. Let's take a look at the first components of removable partial denture. Number one, guiding plane. The guiding plane is one that the metal framework which in the proximal surface engaging with the adjacent abutment tooth. So in this particular case, one here, and on the measure of tooth number 15, and also there's a two more right here, measure of tooth number two, and distal of tooth number four. So there are one, two, three, four guiding plane. And let's take a look at the, what are these guiding plane. The guiding plane, which described on this particular image, when the matter framework in and out from the mouth, this whole matter framework should be inserted and removed at night. It we call the path of insertion of this partial denture. So that means between the proximal surface, where there's engaging between the metal and the remaining teeth are guiding the insertion of these prosthesis. When there's only two or more parallel axial surface to limit the path of insertion, that means if these two surface, we call the guiding plane, if these are parallel as it's showing this red mark, then this meta framework only have one path of insertion which make this framework extremely stable and improve the stability of this whole prosthesis compared to when this guiding plane, the surface of the tooth engaging the matter framework are diverged, meaning it's multiple paths of insertion, that means multiple paths of displacement, which makes the prosthesis less stable than when it when you have two perfectly parallel exterior surface of abundant teeth. So to limit the path of displacement, you want to prefer, prepare the guiding plane in all the proximal surface which will have a guiding plane. Now, naturally, natural teeth does not have flat or perpendicular proximal surface. Rather, all natural teeth will have convex shape and does have a height of contour. Therefore, you need to modify the surface of the proximal surface which will be in the guiding plane 
by shaping, for example, this one, shaping coronal half. Again, we only shaping coronal half, not entire surface. As is noticed here, the red dot showing the original contour of the molar. Now this one, I prepare or modify the surface of coronal half to provide a flat parallel surface on this proximal contour. Now, since I changed the proximal contour, the matter framework which will engage on this tooth will have much better contact, guidance, therefore it improves the stability. You need to prepare the guiding plane on all four teeth. So that's the first component. The second one is major connector. Once, so the first one is guide, marking down where will be the guiding plane. Second one is major connector. Major connector is the one that is making this prosthesis rigid, connect all together. So provide the structural integrity and rigidity. For the major connector, make sure you understand that the maxillary major connector are different than mandibular major connector. In maxillary, there are four types of major connector you may choose. First one is the single palatal bar. And this is the image is showing the single palatal bar. When it when you have a few teeth missing, meaning the majority of the teeth are still remaining, therefore the expected force, bite force on this teeth from the from the partial denture are not too much so that you do not need to cover a lot of surface. Therefore, we call the single palatal bar is the one of the type when it has a few teeth missing. This is when it's, as you see here, is only one tooth missing, one and maybe two. So we choose the major connector, single palatal bar, but you need to extend it, make sure it is cover all the teeth that we're going to replace it. If the teeth are missing more, so in this particular, compared to the first one, it has the additional teeth missing. What you need to change is the width of the major connector, which is a palatal bar will be wider than the first case because it need more support. Still, this one consider as a single palatal bar. Second option or type is called U-shape. U-shape are, as you notice, this is inverted U-shape. And this one is quite versatile and universally used due to the strengths provided by the shape of the major connector. And it's also quite useful when you have a maxillary tori, which you cannot use the single palatal bar, which will cause the damage on the tori. Therefore, when you choose the major connector, this will be good example how to avoid maxillary tori. Another type is called AP bar. It's actually anterior, posterior bar, but we shorten AP bar. And this is how you design. So there are two components. One goes across the anteriorly and second one connecting posterior portion. Anterior portion, posterior portion. And this one, as you notice, structurally a lot more rigid than single palatal bar or U-shape. Therefore, it also provides very good rigidity 
and structure integrity compared to other two. Therefore, if the teeth are more missing, this could be a good candidate for major connector for a particular case. When it comes to having more teeth missing or a patient lost more teeth, and so therefore only few teeth remaining, the last option or choice will be complete coverage. So particular this case is only showing one, two, three, four teeth remaining. Therefore, we wanted to cover the palate to provide the maximum support from the tissue too. Let's have a look at this case that has three teeth missing, four teeth missing on this side, total seven teeth, and chose very thin major connector. So this case is incorrectly designed because if you imagine the bite force applied onto this prosthesis, this thin major connector, single polyester bar, will not work or will not, will not support the bite force. So therefore, either you make it much wider, single polyester bar, or U-shape, or AP bar should be considered for this case. Second case, showing patient condition are exactly identical, same. This is the patient old denture, and this is patient new denture that one of the doctor tried to deliver. And as you notice, there's only one tooth missing. Do we have to cover the full palatal coverage? Well, this is example of not to over engineer the condition, meaning not to cover full palate because unnecessary coverage will patient feel the much more discomfort because of the covering more surface. So this particular case, the doctor could not deliver the denture because patient doesn't want to wear this unnecessarily full covering palat palatal prosthesis. So you have, you learn the four different type of maxillary major connector, you need to choose based on the patient existing condition. Mandibular major connector also has a four different type, lingual bar and lingual plate, sublingual bar and labial bar. Lingual bar is the most commonly using major connector for the mandibular matter framework design. So this is the typical example of lingual bar. And when you design the lingual bar, make sure the front portion of the bar does have three to four millimeter space from the freezing margin. And that's why the bar are located three, four millimeter below. And it also has a four millimeter thickness width of the metal crossing the arch. And this is the sample of lingual bar. And you need to understand because of it's not that thick or wide, you need to have a very unique sectional dimension shape of the lingual bar shape. So this is a cross-sectional view of lingual bar. When you look at closely, well, this is not just regular flat metal. It does have a much thicker in the bottom, which is a base, than the anterior portion of the lingual bar, which is a lot thinner. It's called half pear shape, pear shape, half pear shape, sectional, cross-sectional view of lingual bar. The reason you must have lingual bar with this shape, if you're not making that one in this particular design, which is for the rigidity and strength, 
for example, this particular case, take a look at how the lingual bar is made. When you look at this thin and flat instead of thick on the bottom, this meta framework could fracture on their function. And this is an example of the denture broke major connector broken during the function. So that's why to prevent or to provide the enough strength of the major connector, lingual bar should have half pear shape contour in the cross-sectional view. There are another very important parameter is as I mentioned, since the bar should be should have space from the free gingival margin, you need to measure whether there is enough depth on the lingual surface to deliver lingual bar major connector. If you do not have a space, then you need to choose other type of major connector for the mandible. So how do we check? You need to check with the probe and check from the free gingival margin to the bottom of the floor of the mouth, which is usually on the lingual flange or lingual frenum area. So lift we are up, checking. Lift the tongue up. Thank you. And put it down. So as you notice, I asked the patient to lift the tongue up so that the floor of the mouth are elevated while I'm probing the depths from the free gingival margin to the bottom of the circus. Because when his patient relax the tongue, the depths may change because the floor of the mouth level are elevated and different. So Lifting when you're up, measuring, lift the tongue up. Thank you and put it down. So make sure you have the patient to lift the tongue up when you're measuring from free gingival margin to the bottom of the floor of the mouth. Now, what if we don't provide enough space from the free gingival margin? This is what happened when the patient wear the partial denture, major connector does not have any space from the free gingival margin. So as you notice, this portion are actually touching with the free gingival margin. Once we remove the matter framework or partial denture, yes, you could actually as gingival resection caused by major connector. So you need to be careful when you design, make sure either you provide enough space from free gingival margin or you need to stay on the major connector on top of the single room or half of the lingual surface. Now, what if we don't have enough space, which is a 7 to 8 millimeter for the lingual bar? Well, when you don't have enough room from the free gingival margin to the floor of the mouth, minimum 7 to 8 millimeter, then the other alternative are called the lingual plate. So this is the second type of mandibular major connector. So this is a view of the lingual plate. Now this lingual plate will be engaging about half to one third of the lingual surface. And this lingual plate, because of enough width, it does not have half pear shape because you don't need the half pear shape because of enough strength provided by the width. So the cross-sectional view on the lingual plate are flat instead of half, half pear shape. This is another view, actual case is using the lingual plate. The reason we open up on this part because of diastema. 
but normally most patient who doesn't have a diastema you cover crossed from the canine to the distal of the canine not only well one of the typical sample condition that has not enough lingual depth to use the lingual bar is when it has tongue tie or the high lingual frenum attachment as is shown in this picture. So this is one, one of the typical condition that you need to use the lingual plate instead of lingual bar because when you choose the lingual bar, this frenum got impinged. Therefore, you need to design the lingual plate so that this lingual frenum, high frenum are freely moved. Another condition that you need to consider lingual plate are mandibular toroid. So as you notice, there are large mandibular toroid present. And when the large toroid present, instead of removing surgically, you simply design major connector with the lingual plate so that major connector doesn't need to be engaged onto the tori which is much more sensitive tissue so you should avoid any contact between the major connector onto the mandibular tori another third option as a mandibular major connector is called sublingual bar. In very few conditions which you can't do the lingual bar nor lingual plate, then sublingual bar is same di se sectional cross-sectional view as a lingual bar, but is actually rotated. So then when you look at this picture, this one is rotated upward so the bottom of the, this half pear shape are not closely engaged to the bottom as is shown here when you design in this one you not you it does not require seven eight millimeter space from here to here instead it could be done much less about five millimeter so that it you could deliver in the patient who does not have enough depth but there's a disadvantage of this major connector is due to the bottom portion of the sublingual bar are sticking out. It actually quite discomfort on patient tongue movement. So you be very careful when you choose sublingual bar. It only indicated when the lingual bar and lingual plate, neither of them are indicated or used. And one last type of the mandibular major connector are labial bar major connector. When all mandibular teeth are severely lingually tilted, so therefore, due to the teeth undercut, you cannot put any major connector on the lingual side. That's the only time we use the labial bar. This are very rare meaning most of the mandibular partially dentures case will handle either design with lingual bar or lingual plate but it's these two other sublingual bar and labial bar are very rare condition that you have to use otherwise two other type will not be indicated So we just discussed about two components, guiding plane and major connector. Now the third components are direct retainer. Direct retainer is called clasp assembly. And it does need a direct retainer for all the abutment teeth. So we call the abutment teeth on the teeth that has a direct retainer so there are four direct retainer four abutment teeth for this particular design 
in class or direct retainer, there are two major types. One is supraverge class, which is class for assembly. Retentive arm come from the top portion of the tooth to engaging onto the cervical portion on the cut. So it's come from the top portion and coming down to engage the undercut. Same thing, coming from the coronal portion and slope going down to the engaging undercut. It's called the supraverge clasp type. Versus infraverge type, when you look at this picture of clasp, it's actually travel from the bottom and engaging onto the undercut going upward. Instead of coming from the top, this retentive arm coming from the bottom, which is from the vestibule, engage onto the undercut area. These type are called infraverge class. There are many different in supraverge class, acres, wing class, back action class, Versus infraverge is called I bar, Y bar, T bar. So there are a number of different types, but two different major category are one supraverge class and the other one is infraverge class. Remember for the Kennedy class one and two area, when you choose the direct retainer, you must consider stress releasing class. What is stress releasing class? And when the patient bite force apply onto the denture base and the denture teeth. This denture clasp assembly that has a special rest seat position in the major side of the tooth. So when it when the patient bite down and again these prostheses are moved vertically up and down about 20 times more because of, there's no posterior abutment. So meaning this distal base moves downward quite a bit. And the movement is along with this rotation axis because these are whole in one piece. These are the act as axis of rotation and this prosthesis coming downward movement. It's kind of rotating along side with axis of the rotation. Meaning it's downward and forward. And when it comes to this I bar, when that happens, it moves downward and forward. Meaning the bar, tip of the I bar are disengaging from the tooth. Because of this disengagement during the patient habitual bite down, the tooth holding all this prosthesis does not having unnecessary adverse torquing toward to the distal because clasp assembly are disengaging from the tooth, meaning the stress from the bite are released by the clasp retentive arm movement due to the design. It's called stress releasing clasp. There are three kinds. One is RPI, second type is RPA, and third one is combination clasp. We'll discuss about all this detail in the next session. So you choose the direct retainer based on the condition. The fourth component is indirect retainer. What are the indirect retainer and how we design it? Before you actually put the indirect retainer, you need to understand what is the fulcrum line. The fulcrum line is connecting most distal rest. So for this particular case, there's a rest seat and there's another side, there's rest seat. Connecting center of the rest, this connecting most distal rest seat 
this line we call the fulcrum line. Along this fulcrum line, these prosthesis could rotate up and down along the line of this fulcrum line, meaning the prosthesis move up and down. Same thing on the other side. Another different case example, most distal rest, most distal rest. Connecting this two most distal rest seat is called the fulcrum line. Once you did identify the fulcrum line, how are you going to, meaning this distal extension base will move up and down. How are you preventing this rotational movement? Well, by putting stop, vertical stop anterior to this fulcrum line will reduce upward movement of this prosthesis. So this case, once I put another supporting rest seat on the anterior to this fulcrum line, which is blue color, this rest seat will preventing this denture, partial denture, moving upward movement by having support, additional support anterior to the fulcrum line. This is called indirect retainer. The function is reducing the rotational movement through the fulcrum line. And this one providing stability of partial denture framework. So this particular case, for example, lingual floor depth is 9.9 .9 millimeter from here, freezing the margin to the bottom when the lift the tongue up. But anterior teeth has a four millimeter recession. Still, this floor depths are measured from the free gingival margin and this has no mobility. So the design wise, you start with guiding plane here, here, and here, and leisure of 27, and distal of 27. So these are all guiding plane. Major connector, mandibular, therefore, I'm gonna choose lingua bar because you have enough room for the bar. Using the, this part, I'm going to use Acre Supra Verge Clasp. This part, remember, there are three stress releasing class for distally missing condition. So when you choose the direct retainer for this tooth, as soon as you see the distally missing, then you need to consider 103 class direct retainer, RPI, RPA, combination class. So this one, I'm gonna choose RPA. And then there's a, there's a fulcrum line connecting K9 and molar. Therefore, I need to provide another indirect retainer on Tooth number 22. And this rest seat will preventing rotational movement along the fulcrum line. So this will be our design. Guiding plane, major connector, direct retainer. And this particular case, we also use 22 and indirect retainer or indirect function on tooth number 22. How about this? Lingual floor depth 8.9 millimeter. So it's enough depth. Oh, but the anterior teeth has mobility one or more, meaning these teeth are mobile. In this case, 
we use the lingual plate because in case that as NTRT is falling apart, still this framework will modify by adding the teeth on the adding the teeth on the area that has going to be missed. Not only that one, it will support the mobile teeth as a sprinting effect when you're putting the lingual plate. So in this case, we use the lingual plate as a major connector, but other are same. We use the stress releasing clasp, stress releasing clasp on both sides because it's a Kennedy class one bilateral distal extension. And last one is minor connector. So we discussed about four components and the last one minor connector. And minor connector is the one that is connecting all the components, indirect retainer, major connector, and this part, which is connecting all this guiding plane, all pieces, and area, which is called mesh, which is helping to holding the acrylic and the denture piece, are the fifth components which you're going to draw on the designing. So this is the part, minor connector, including mesh supporting eventual spaces. So that's another one. And that's also minor connector. Connecting rest seat onto the major connector. So these are the five components when you in, regarding the metal framework design and additional information and reading are your manual page number 173 to 242.